Suffered through some uncertainty early on. Um, we sent everybody out of the courthouse except for uh, four of us in this office. And it was our anticipation that if those four got sick, another four would come in. If they got sick, another four would come in. And if they got sick, another four would come in. And hopefully by the time that team was at the end of their rope, the first team would be ready to come back in. So luckily we never had to do that. But we stuck with team one and the rest of my employees worked from home uh, when they could, if we could farm out work to them via the internet or the mail, we did that. But for most of the part, we worked with a skeleton crew for the better part of the year. The only persons that could come in here were individuals who were needing restraining orders to protect themselves from domestic violence. Other than that, the courthouse was locked down. Had no court for a while. Later on, we uh, sort of refired up a communication system that could use closed circuit television between the detention center and one of our courtrooms. Uh, in fact, two of our courtrooms, one of the family court rooms and one of the uh, regular courtrooms. And so we started having guilty pleas and some family court via closed circuit television. We did no jury trials. Uh, in fact, we sent out the letters to bring in a jury pool to select our grand jury for 2021 and got a letter from the Chief Justice saying dismiss everybody from being here for that selection. We will do it later. So we're going to start off the year without a grand jury. That's never happened before. No. Now we did suspend grand jury uh, appearances for about five months and then we brought them back in and instead of being in the grand jury room around a big table we put them in the main courtroom ten feet apart really and that's how the grand jury met for the last half of the year well I think on the criminal side I think there's been some real negotiations between the solicitor's office and defense lawyers and they have done their absolute best to negotiate so that people can get out of jail or go to jail and get their sentences started. On the uh, civil side of things, really good cases settle. If, if there's a real issue involved in a civil case, most of the times, both sides are scared of turning it over to a jury. So those have continued to settle. A couple of years ago, we went to e-filing on the civil side of things to where attorneys could file lawsuits sitting at home at 1 o'clock in the morning in their underwear. <laughs> they didn't have to come to the courthouse anymore. Well, we are now doing that with family court, and it's called... FCCMS, which stands for Family Court Case Management System. And um, it's going to be electronic. You're going to be able to pull up. Now, obviously, there'll be some parts of Family Court that'll be confidential. Um, but for the most part, lawyers will be able to pull up all the pleadings and filings on divorce cases, custody cases, that sort of thing. You know, information about children will still be confidential, but it'll be a process that will be less paper intensive. And uh, this also takes us to a uh, uh, controlled collection system in Columbia that is statewide. People do not come into the courthouse anymore and pay their $20 child support. It gets mailed to Columbia. And uh, that, that really got rolling this year. You know, if you go back 
and look, when the city put its money where its mouth is and said, we're going to do the streetscape, we're going to build parking garages, we're going to, then you saw private investment follow it. And I think that has been the case, obviously, with the new hotel that's being built beside City Hall with the parking garage that's in front of the Ross Anderson courthouse. It's going to be seven stories. I mean, that's, that's going to be a big benefit to that area of the downtown. You continue to see investments and businesses open up. The uh, art center just changed out a lot of the art on the street, you know, you've got the horse that's made out of bicycle parts. It looks really cool. I, I just like stopping at that red light and looking at that thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's really something to see. The other thing that we've had to deal with of late is the fact that there have been rumors that, that an attempt was going to be made or will be made to shut down the federal courthouse in Anderson and one in Spartanburg, but the one here that, as you mentioned earlier, is named after Judge Anderson, they want to close that and consolidate Greenville, Anderson and Spartanburg into the new Greenville Courthouse. And you were one of those that wrote a letter saying that's not a good idea. Absolutely. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm the clerk of court, because I really don't have any dealings with federal court, except to send them a case every now and then that gets moved up into their jurisdiction. But from a standpoint of being a lifelong resident of Anderson and a former mayor and somebody who cares about downtown Anderson, I, I said in my letter, and I'll say it today, that is being penny-wise and pound-foolish. Um, there is no reason to shut down that courtroom. Um, it is... Uh, a known fact that the 10th Judicial Circuit, which is Anderson and Oconee County, is a growing market. You know, Seneca, Clemson, Anderson, we're growing. There's not going to be less need for federal uh, judging in this area of the world. It's going to increase. Why would you want to centralize that in Greenville where there's no parking, we now have a seven-story parking garage across the street from the Ross Anderson. There are jail cells that are built for federal prisoners 200 yards away from the courtroom. Our judge is from Anderson. Why would he drive to Greenville every day when he can go right here on McDuffie Street and conduct business? And I think, this is what I've been told, that the new Carroll Campbell Federal Courthouse in downtown Greenville is going to have all small courtrooms. So if you have a multi-party uh, case, they don't even have a courtroom big enough. They're going to have to come back over here and dust this one off and put them in it. So it just doesn't make any sense. And we're hoping that uh, Senator Graham and Congressman Duncan can just nip it in the bud and let us continue to live our lives the way we've been living them. <laughs> <laughs> Which hadn't been all that bad. No, it hadn't been bad at all. Judge Anderson enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I celebrated my 10th anniversary as the clerk of court. I was appointed in 2010 by the governor to fill Kathy Phillips' unexpired term and uh, got reelected in November for another four years. But that was probably my last election. Uh, I've been fortunate to be on a ballot in Anderson. I, I think I added it up that day. It was like 12 times that I was really? on a ballot. Um, it's in that range. Yeah. And um, the idea that the folks have supported me and that I've been able to make a living by being a public servant, uh, I'll never be able to repay the citizens of Anderson. But this, even as the mayor, being the clerk of court was a more interesting op observation post. Uh, you see something at the courthouse every day <laughs> that you're not going to see anywhere else. Some of it's comical, some of it's tragic, some of it is just interesting. 
But rarely, rarely do we come to work and not have something that is sort of interesting around the Anderson County Courthouse every day. And I'm proud to be here. I was the youngest person ever elected to Anderson City Council. The year would have been? 1978. And you would have been? 23 years old. Just right out of college, basically. Right out of college. And the reason I got involved, that was the year that they were kicking in the idea of one man, one vote, and they were separating the city council into odd seats and even seats, and the odd seats were going to run for four years, and the even seats were going to run for two years, and you were only going to run in your ward, and there were going to be two seats at large, and all the incumbents were trying to jockey for position as to which seat they were going to run for. And somebody came up with the idea that I was going to be running for city council and they called my boss Billy Wilkes at CNS Bank and said is Richard running for city council trying to find out and he says I don't know let me call him so he called me and he said are you running for city council and I said can I and he says I don't know let me call Columbia so he called Columbia and they, he said can Richard run for city council if he wants to and they said sure we like for folks to be involved and this was at CNS National Bank. And uh, so he called me up and he says, you can run if you want to. And so I started exploring the uh, possibilities and ended up doing it. So and, up until that point, you had not given it any serious thought. No. Until he said, are you? And then you said, could I? Well, I, it never crossed my mind. I, I was... I had just started working like the year before. I yeah. was trying to <laughs> get my legs underneath me as a as a bank official. Was told that you know I was going to get beat, but it'd be a good experience, okay, and sure. I I'd lay the groundwork yeah, for later. Yeah, and, I've heard that, yeah. And but I ended up winning. How hard did you work? Real hard. I I went door to door in a lot of neighborhoods. Uh, that was back in the good old days where radio advertising and television, I'm mean, not television, but newspaper advertising was very important. Everybody read the newspaper. Benefit of a Paul Brown <laughs> newscast, I had to, had to kind of scratch that out on my own, but um, did a lot of door to door. At the same time, I will say this, is that in the spring of 1978 when I ran, um, I was getting married in August of 78, two or three months later, to Rochelle Pope, whose father owned Pope Drugs. And I had a lot of people in Ward 1 who went to First Baptist Church with the Propes. And they came up to me at the polling places when I was shaking hands and said, are you the boy who's going to marry the Pope girl? And I said, yes, I am. And I think that's how I got elected. <laughs> and I would probably agree that that is a true fact. That's a story. <laughs> what a great way to end our conversation.